so many methods, so many classifiers. We've seen quite a bunch already, and there are more. But how do you choose? In this session, we're going to talk about the secret weapon of prediction, and that is called ensembles. The idea is, instead of choosing, let's combine them. Or as the song by Queen goes, if you can't beat them, join them. We're going to concentrate on joining. What is the idea behind combining, and what do I mean by combining? Well, let me tell you the story of Netflix Prize. This was a big competition that ran for a couple of years, and the idea here was for different teams to create predictive models to help Netflix improve their movie recommender system. I won't get into the details of what exactly was the task, but each team that submitted an entry needed to submit a set of predictions for a set of movie ratings by certain users. Not a long time after the prize began, some teams started discovering that they're actually doing better by combining forces. What do I mean combining forces? Of course, they weren't sharing the algorithms with each other, but they said, listen, We'll tell you what our predictions are, and you tell us what your predictions are, and then we'll merge forces and submit predictions that are either an average or a vote of both our sets of predictions. And slowly you could see teams joining and joining and joining until at the end, the winning team was actually a combination of three teams, each team coming from a different company or independent consultants. In fact, one of these three teams was the research lab at AT&T. And that research lab had separate groups working on the same problem and then condensing or combining their results. That turned out to be a very powerful strategy. So one thought is to combine forces by looking at different teams. And in fact, that's also what you can do when you're crowdsourcing a data mining solution. You might have multiple solutions from different competitors or from different companies, and by combining the solutions, you might get better predictions. Here's the team that won the Netflix prize. They actually won $1 million. And you can see on the right hand, we'll see these are the people from AT&T. And then we had two other teams here that were part of the winning group called Belcor's Pramatic House. So they won the money, but they actually made a few very interesting points about the power of ensembles. So what does ensemble mean? Ensemble means combining predictions either from different methods. If it's a classification task and you have multiple classifiers, we can take all the different classifiers and the prediction that they create and join them using voting. Or maybe we can take, if it's a very large data set, we can take the data set and split it into subsets fit separate methods to each one of the data sets, and then combine those results into a more powerful classifier or predictor. And finally, you can have people using completely different approaches to the entire data set. Maybe they're doing different things to the data set. Maybe they're approaching it not only from a data mining point of view. Maybe they're putting in business rules. Maybe they're using some other methodologies. So combining different ways of looking at the data or different ways of producing predictions has the chance of actually producing more precise predictions. And by the word precise, I'm alluding to the variation that predictions can have. When we're talking about predictions, of course, they will have some variability, how they would vary if we had some other random generation of the data. How do we combine the predictions? Now, you can think about it as just taking an average. If we're generating numerical predictions, then I can just take an average of predictions from different methods or coming from different data sources, etc. If I'm thinking about classification, then taking an average is basically the idea of voting. But we're not simply going to take an average. We could do that, but a more powerful approach is to take a weighted average. And the idea is to give higher weight to better performers. What are better performers? These can be, for instance, methods that produce more accurate predictions based on performance evaluation. Or maybe if I'm combining predictors that are based on different data sets that came from different data sources, maybe some sources are more reliable than others. And then I want to weight those data sources heavier. So you have to think carefully about the application and think about which methods you want to weigh heavier and which data sources you want to weigh heavier and then combine them all together to generate better predictions. 
hopefully better predictions. We already talked about two particular ensemble approaches. One was random forests and the other was boosted trees. Both of these are ensembles of trees and we talked about them in the sessions on classification trees, on CART. And in both cases, you see that they're approaching the ensembles in a different way. In random forests, you're actually creating data replications by using Bootstrap and then fitting multiple trees and letting all the trees vote. In boosted trees, we're doing something a little bit different. We're first running one big tree on our data, and then we're starting to focus on the records that were most difficult to accurately classify. So it's a slightly different way of combining, but in both cases, we're doing ensembles. Ensembles are also useful when we're doing forecasting, meaning predicting into the future. There's a very interesting website called Forecasting Principles that um, gives a discussion by experts on ensembles. And one of the questions that they're answering is, what are the disadvantages of combined forecasts? Because if this is such a magical secret weapon, why isn't everyone using it? Well, answer number one, or A, is that this incurs increased costs. Of course, it's going to take you longer to fit multiple classifiers. It's going to also cost you more if you're going to deploy this to multiple people. It can also cost you more if you have to collect more data or different sets of data. So there are definitely more costs associated. You'll also need more domain knowledge. You'll also need to know more data mining. How many methods do you know? You might need to buy more software because maybe your software only implements some methods and not others. So there are definitely more costs and more resources needed for fitting ensembles. I'll also add the point that remember that we're talking about prediction. If we're trying to explain, are ensembles going to be that useful? That's an important point to consider. Now let's move to point B. Point B says you need analysts who are familiar with a number of methods. And again, obviously, this is a resource that you need to have. And C is need to ensure that a predetermined rule for combining is agreed upon. Otherwise, people can find a forecast or prediction to suit their biases. And that's going to be always a problem because people sometimes get emotional about their own method and will always tend to choose their method at the end. So determining upfront how you're going to combine the results is part of the process of planning the project. Another interesting question that these experts answered was, why isn't it common to use combined forecasts or ensembles? And here, they're a little sarcastic. A, it is counterintuitive. People think you only get an average forecast, and they believe that if you can pick a method, they will do better. And they checked and found that this indeed is how people think. So if this is counterintuitive, then people will tend not to use ensembles. But we'll see in a minute that this is actually proven to be better. And the last answer here to why it's not more common to see ensembles is that this solution is too simple. People like complex approaches. The scientific truth about ensembles is really that you do get improvements, or at least you don't lose much in terms of the accuracy or the precision of your predictions. Of course, you do have to take into account all the costs and see whether operationally it makes sense to take ensembles. It's going to generate more robust predictions because, for instance, if something happens and one of the classifiers stops working, maybe your software license ran out on the CART model, or maybe you had an outlier which really threw the linear regression off, but not the other methods, then by combining a bunch of different methods, you do get more robust predictions. And secondly, as I mentioned before, by combining and averaging, this averaging procedure actually increases precision. And for those of you who remember statistics a little deeper, if you think about what's the variance of the average of X bar, it is much smaller than the variance of an individual observation. And that's the trick behind the scenes. If this reminds you something else, it might be reminding you of portfolio management, where the idea is to diversify and not put all of your eggs in the same basket. What's the idea behind portfolios? You're going to reduce risk by diversifying. So diversifying is similar to what we're doing in ensembles, and precision of predictions is similar to risk. 
Finally, the trick here is to think about the prediction errors. They will determine how much better you'll do in an ensemble compared to an individual classifier. So if we're looking at prediction errors that are resulting from different methods, when do you think you'll get the best improvement? When they're uncorrelated? When they're positively correlated? Or when they're negatively correlated? This is the question that we're going to discuss on our forum this week.